Hey everyone, welcome back. Um, today we're going to be talking about all things MCP uh, and to help me break this down into simple terms, I'm joined today uh, by Suresh Pandarkar, who is the Chief Technical Architect here in TalkDesk, which is a leading AI company in the customer experience automation space. So Suresh knows all things MCP. He works with our uh, global tech alliance partners, including hyperscalers. Suresh, thank you for doing this and welcome. Thank you, Ashish. It's my pleasure. All right. So, Suresh, uh, walk us through MCP. You know, why do we need it? What does the architecture looks like? Uh, the floor is all yours. Sure. So, the timing couldn't have been perfect. Uh, November 25th marks the first anniversary of MCP. The model context protocol as many of you know, is an open standard created by Anthropic to connect AI applications to data sources. Developers expose their data through MCP servers and AI application builders use MCP clients to connect to these servers. A simple analogy that I would like to give is that of Google Translate. When communicating with people speaking different languages, you can use Google Translate to speak in English and it translates it into the appropriate language based on the other party. Now let's try and understand what this really means from a technical standpoint. Large language models are incredibly smart but they struggle when they need information beyond what was used in their training data set. AI agents solve this problem by providing LLMs with the right context, by accessing data from files, knowledge bases, or tools. They can even take actions like updating a document or sending an email or sending an SMS based on that context. But for this, developers must write custom code for each data source or API. This gives rise to a classic software engineering problem called M by N integration. It happens when you have many clients on one side and many servers on the other side. Without a standard way to connect them, every client needs a custom integration with every other server. That means instead of building a few connections, you end up with M multiplied by N integrations. As you can imagine, this is costly, repetitive, and very hard to maintain. Now, MCP solves this problem by introducing a common language between clients and servers. It reduces the problem from M by N connections to just M plus one connections. This way, any client can access any server automatically. Let's now look at the architecture of MCP. The host here is the user facing application. The client is a component within the host that manages connections to servers. The server connects to external tools, even resources and prompts. MCP protocol defines core primitives for the client and for the server. It also defines interactions between the client and the server. So Ashish, that in a nutshell is what MCP is all about. Thanks for the explanation, Suresh. It looks like uh, MCP has a lot of benefits. If I understand, like if you're a developer, uh, it reduces uh, the whole development time um, and also the complexity, if you will, right? Because now you're not adding glue code uh, for every single integration when you have to connect it over APIs. Now, APIs don't go away with MCP, I'm not saying that. Uh, but uh, then you have, uh, if you're an AI agent uh, that you are you have built, then it has access to the whole ecosystem of tools. Um, and then finally, if you're an end user, you have more capable AI agents. So are there any security concerns? 
So from cyber security standpoint, I can think of a few things that we must keep in mind. First and foremost is you need to be aware of rogue MCP servers out there. Then of course, there could be supply chain vulnerabilities that could creep in. Mm -hmm. uh, you should also be aware about prompt injection attacks. Okay. And most importantly, as uh, an end user is presented with multiple MCP servers and they have to individually provide their consent, it is possible that a consent fatigue could set in and could then give rise to the other problems that we just discussed about. Understand, understand. What about uh, performance overhead? Because now imagine like with APIs, we, you know, we configure those APIs on our agents and we provided the API endpoint and it you know, senses a whole bunch of data that we extract. What about MCP? Because, you know, you are getting like a whole bunch of tools. Let's say I connect to a database and that database is a whole bunch of, you know, tools that it's sending back. What about some of the performance constraints there? So MCP inherently does not have any performance overhead, but agents that use MCP extensively are running into token cost and latency issues. Okay. This is because every tool definition and every intermediate result is loaded in the context window. So Anthropic has now recommended a new design pattern it's called code execution with MCP. Okay. This turns MCP tools into code APIs. So the model can write and run code instead of calling tools directly. So the proposed solution is to place MCP inside a code execution logic. Mm -hmm. When needed, the model discovers the module and writes TypeScript code that imports and composes these modules. This code okay. then runs in a secure sandboxed environment. Oh. Hopefully that answers uh, all your uh, questions around MCP. Yeah, it does, Suresh. Thank you so much for giving uh, this level of knowledge in such a short time. Uh, I thought I'd show my audience a little bit of a demo of a MCP client uh, or an MCP tester tool that I built uh, using Replit. Uh, so that we have some idea of how the discovery works and what kind of tools are exposed by, you know, these MCP servers. So I'm going to share my screen here. Sure. All right. So what we're looking at is uh, this MCP tester tool that I have built. And, uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and add an MCP server here. Now you can do the same thing with, uh, with uh, Postman as well, but, you know, I like to build things on my own. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, you can see that you can configure your MCP server. So you can either have an HTTP type or if you have a WebSocket type, you can do either one. Uh, I already have one loaded here for uh, for myself. So I'm going to load that here. I'm going to put in the authentication token. So I'm going to put in the authentication token here. Um, and then go ahead and connect this. And so you can see that now uh, it has discovered uh, all the tools that are available for me to save. Uh, now, these are the tools that this Superbase MCP server is exposing to me. Uh, and with each tool, as Suresh was mentioning earlier, there is a description, which is what the agent uses to figure out which tool to use. Also, uh, as Suresh was talking about the uh, the, the approval fatigue, right? Because to use every tool, the protocol specifies that you have to request for approval. You you can you can have the AI agent always ask you for approval, uh, or or you can never require approval for any other tool call. So there is some built-in security there. But once that is done, I can save my preferences, and now these are the capabilities that I'm you know that I'm afforded for this particular you know uh, MCP server for Superbase. So there are 20 tools, there are no resources and there are no system prompts that it has sent back. So we're going to use one of the tools. So let's use, uh, let's say, list, list edge functions, right? So we have a whole bunch of edge functions that we are uh, using. I'm going to go ahead and run the tool. And you can see now all the data that is available to me uh, through just this one tool, right? I mean, in the absence of something like this, we would have to go, you know, configure separate API calls to every single one of these, uh, you know, uh, these edge functions. Now, uh, 
Uh, you can see this is the actual JSON that comes back. Here is the body. If I want to look at here's the header, uh, but this is all the data. Similarly, if I go into list tables uh, and I want to list all the tables in uh, my MCP server, which is my Superbase, then I can connect here. And here are all the tables. If I look at the schema, then you know this is a patient information. All of that information is coming right here for me to actually grab uh, and and display for my users. So here's a you know this was a, just a basic understanding. Just for the basic understanding of MCP, I thought I'll, I'll showcase this. I hope this was helpful. And uh, for more videos like that, stay tuned and subscribe for more.